Welcome to Part 4 of Evaluation Basics for Non-Evaluators. Jen is getting the hang of this evaluation stuff, but she's still not sure who is supposed to do this work, so that's what we'll address in this video. So who can do the evaluation? Jen has a lot of smart people on her team, so she's wondering if they can just do it internally. The answer to that question is no, because the ATE program specifically states that the evaluator must be independent of the project. Here is Jen's project. Someone working on the project, like the principal investigator, co-PI, project manager, or even a participating faculty member, would not be considered independent. The project sits in a department, so the same would go for someone outside of the project who works in the same department. There is not enough independence here. The department sits in a college. According to the ATE program solicitation, the evaluator may be employed by the project's home institution as long as they work in a separate unit like a different academic department or institutional research office. Outside of the college is the rest of the world. An evaluator out here has the highest level of independence unless that person has another role on the project. So how do you find an independent evaluator? There are professional evaluation associations. There is scholarship and academic journals dedicated to evaluation. And many professionals who identify as evaluators. The American Evaluation Association has almost 7,000 members. When looking for an evaluator, you should know there is no specific degree or certification required to call oneself an evaluator. Pretty much anyone could put out a sign and say they are an evaluator. A big consulting firm can say evaluation is one of the types of services they offer. Neither of these things ensures an entity is qualified or unqualified to perform evaluation services. So you want to be careful and look for someone who has experience as an evaluator, has strong research skills, is a good communicator, and who will be responsive to your situation, and has a good understanding of NSF and two-year colleges. It's not always easy to find someone with the perfect mix of credentials. Let's help Jen select an evaluator for her project. Pause this video and take a moment to review the credentials of three evaluators and think about which one you would recommend to Jen for the evaluation of her project, or what questions you think she should ask before making a decision. When you're ready to proceed, go ahead and restart the video. Evaluator A seems to have good knowledge of two-year colleges, technician education, and student services, but I would want to know more about their experience as an external evaluator of grant-funded projects. Accreditation has a lot in common with project evaluation, but it's not the same thing. Evaluator B looks like they have great credentials when it comes to evaluation, but I would want to know how much time they would really have to work on this project, given that they are working on 25 other evaluations, and I would suspect that they have a team working with them, so I would want to know who would actually be working on this project and what their credentials are. Evaluator C certainly knows two-year colleges and NSF, but it's not clear if they have any expertise when it comes to research methods and running evaluation projects, so I would ask about those things. For more guidance on how to select an evaluator, see Evaluate's Guide to Finding and Selecting an Evaluator for ATE Proposals. The link is on the handout that goes with this video. And keep in mind, while you must have an independent evaluator, that doesn't mean you can't do some of the work internally. While the evaluator should be responsible for the more technical aspects of the evaluation, things related to data collection, analysis, and reporting, the project team can provide assistance with data collection, and they really are in the best position to keep track of who is involved and what the project is doing. The project team and the evaluator can work together to plan the evaluation and interpret the results. And this isn't just about cutting costs. It's about making sure the evaluation is relevant to the key stakeholders. So Jen is warming up to the idea of having her project evaluated, but she's not clear how it's supposed to show up in her proposal. We'll address that in the next video.